Hey everyone and welcome back to daily tuition. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can work with React Query. React Query is a data fetching library for React. But in more technical terms, it makes fetching, caching, synchronizing and updating server state in your React application. It works amazingly out of the box with zero configuration and can be customized very easily. Let's take a look at a very simple example of it. I'm going to first create the React application. I use Vid to quickly create the React application. Once you have your React application, just open your main file. You might have index.js file in your React application. Just open that and inside this file, you have to wrap your app component using query provider. Just for that, open the terminal, enter into your React app and execute a command called npm i for install and then install React query. You have to install React query package in your React application. So once you have this package, Clear the screen, close the terminal and now you have to wrap your parent component inside query client provider. So at the top, you need to first import from react query and from react query you have to import query client and query client provider. You have to wrap your main component using this query client provider. So just copy this and paste that here to wrap your app component. And then to this query provider, you have to specify your query client. To create a query client, you can use this query client variable. So you can just simply say here constant query client is equal to new query client. You have to use this function and then pass that here. So this is going to create a query client for the React query. And then you have to pass this query client to the client property. So just pass here client is equal to in the curly braces you have to pass query client you have to pass this variable to this client property now you successfully created the server state in your react application there is a very simple way to do the same thing instead of creating a new variable you can just grab the statement and pass that right here something like this and just get rid of this constant variable both statements are identical now just for that save the changes back to your parent component in react query there are three core concepts queries mutation and query invalidation let's start with a query query can be used with any promise based method including get and post method to fetch data from the server so let's suppose you want to fetch the data from the rest api i already have the rest api running inside this local system so i'm going to just use that rest api to fetch the data from the server so at the top here i'm going to say import and from the react query i'm going to import a function or you can say a hook called use query and just out of that inside this app i'm simply going to say use query and as a first parameter you need to specify tag i'm going to specify tag here user that's upon you you can specify any name to this tag i will show you more about this tag later just for now when you specify tag name to the second parameter you need to specify a function a promise based function to get the data from the server so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a function here at the top. I'm going to create a function async function and I'm going to name that function get random users and then I'm going to pass this function to this second parameter something like this. And as you know, we need to return promise from this get random user and from this get random user. I'm going to get the data from the server. So as you know, to get the data, we can use a fetch method. So we can simply call here fetch in the single code in the fetch method. I'm, I'm going to pass my endpoint user and then I'm going to say dot then and then I'm going to send response as response dot JSON and then I'm going to grab this data in the variable. So let is going to be the response just for that. I'm going to say if if we have response then return response else I'm going to throw a new error. And I'm going to return response with that. So this function is now going to return a data to this use query hook. Now what I want when we make a request, I want to make some delay. To make some delay, I'm going to create a function. So at the top here, I'm going to create a function constant delay is equal to I'm going to pass parameter ms and pass default value to it, which is 200. It means two second and then I'm going to return a promise if the promise is successful then i'm going to execute this function and then i'm going to say here response timeout and then i'm going to pass that millisecond here so this function is going to make two second delay in this function so at the top just out of this response just before this statement here i'm going to say await 
delay now this get random user function can be any function that return promise so once we have this function we pass that to this user query and this user query is going to return different properties and we get that properties using javascript destructuring so we pass here equal to sign and then i'm going to say constant in the object we destructure all the properties of this user query you can get all the properties inside this object so we first get is loading then we get error and then we get data property inside this is loading we get the is loading status inside this error we're going to have the error message and then inside this data we have the actual response of the query just have that right down here i'm going to simply say if the data is loading then just return this loading message if there is an error then return this error message and then if there is a data inside this data variable then i'm going to return that using this return statement so i'm going to just print here empty bracket and then return the data using using data dot map function i'm going to iterate over this component let me create this component just down here so we create a function here and then pass name to it show component and pass here data inside this i'm going to simply return a division tag and then i'm going to return first the image and then we return h1 heading tag with the first name and the last name and then at the end we return h2 heading tag with data email so i'm going to just display this data when we have a data inside this data variable i'm going to iterate over that data using map function so using this key we pass the unique key to this show component and pass that data to this data variable and then we destructure it this data inside this show component and display it now let me save the changes and show you the result when i reload the browser you can see i'm going to have your loading status and then when the loading is successful after two seconds and i'm going to have the response something like this that's super easy right now you can get different properties using this use query function something like is success or is fetching if you want to know more about properties you can just print this use query inside a console now once we understand how we can use use query let's take a look at how we can use mutation using mutation you can make a post request so just start this use query here i'm going to specify use mutation hook just are that just are this use query i'm going to simply specify here constant mutation is equal to and then here i'm going to call use mutation hook now you can specify any name to this mutation variable inside this use mutation you need to specify a function which return successful promise so at the top here let me create a function for the post request so i'm going to say here a sync function create new user something like this and then i'm going to pass here parameter new user so we can pass data to this create new user so i'm going to first say here a bit and make some delay to this function using this set timeout delay function so whenever we make a post request it will take two seconds to load the data inside the database and return a response just like that i'm going to say let response is equal to fetch and then what we are going to do is we need to fetch or you can say make a post request on this localhost users and then i'm going to pass a second parameter with the object and then i'm going to say method is going to be post this is a type of post request and then we say header and then i'm going to simply pass here header and body to the body we pass json dot stringify and then pass this parameter here that's super easy right so this is a very simple function we are going to pass to this mutation so inside this mutation right here so inside this mutation i'm going to first create a callback function so i'm going to say here new user and call here an arrow and then we pass this function create new user right here to this parameter right here we're going to pass this new user just for that let me get it of this return statement right from here so we can make a button and make a post request so i'm going to get it of this and paste a new content so what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply going to create a division tag and then using this mutation variable from this mutation variable i'm going to access a property called is loading so i'm going to say if it is loading then return the response adding user if it is error then i'm going to return this error message and then if there is a successful request i'm going to return a division tag with user added text just out of that just down here we have a button and to this button we specify text add user and then we pass here handler function on click and then we pass a function here which is on click so let's create this function at the top so right up here just 
before this return statement, I'm going to say async function on click. And using this on click, I'm going to make a post request. So let's use this mutation variable. So I'm going to say here mutation dot mutate. Using this mutate function, we're going to make a post request. So I'm going to say here mutate and then we pass here data. As you know, using this use mutation, we pass here a parameter called a new user. So we need to pass data to it. So here I'm going to pass an object and inside this I'm going to pass my data. So I'm going to just randomly copy some data and paste that here. So I'm going to insert a new user with the name daily tuition and then pass email programming tutorials and then specify an avatar. Now once you've done that, just down here, I'm going to print all this data in the console. So I'm going to say if we have data, I'm going to say console.log data. As you can notice, this data variable is coming from this use query. So I'm going to get that data and just return inside a console. Let me save the changes and show you the result. Now, when I reload the browser, you can see inside a console, I'm going to get here six arrays. I already have some data inside my server. So I'm going to get six array as a response. Now, what I want, I want to add a new array inside this response. I'm going to click on this get user button. When I click on this get user button, you can see in the message, we get user added. But in the response, we're still going to get six array. Right now, we added one array. So we need to get here seven array as a response. Now, what we have to do is we have to use invalidation query. So whenever we make changes inside the database, we need to refetch that data and get the response back automatically. So to do that, inside this mutation right here, I'm going to pass a new object. And to this object, we pass a function. And to this object, we pass here a property call on success and to this on success i'm going to pass a function something like this and inside this function we need to call a function invalidate queries and you can get the invalidate queries from your query client so at the top right here make sure you first import use query client and using this use query client you can access your current client so inside your app you can say constant query client is equal to use query client something like this and then inside this on success right down here you have to say query client dot invalidate queries and then in the single code you need to specify your tag name as you know when we make a get request we pass some tag to that get request which is user so we pass that same tag right here so whenever we change this user we make a refetch request and get that data now let me just refresh the browser now we have six array inside this object when we click on this add button it's going to say adding user and we get the successful message user added and at the end you can see we have seven array inside this console and at the last we get the data what we inserted we don't need to make a get request again to fetch this data from the server react query will automatically do that your data is cached inside a server state. So anytime whenever you make changes inside your server data, React Query will automatically fetch that data and return to your UI. React Query uses default cache time of five minutes. You can notice we have multiple response here. So if you focus on different window and focus back to your main application, you can see React Query will automatically refetch all the data. That's it. I hope you understand how to work with React Query. If you want more quick videos like this, let me know in the comment section. Like this video if you find anything useful. Subscribe for more latest videos. That is all for now. I will see you in the next one.